Hello there. Should no trade deal be forthcoming after Brexit, then the UK could withhold agreed payments. Eurocrats are not going to be happy bunnies about this one. A proposal is being considered in Whitehall to keep back post-Brexit payments to the EU if no deal on trade is agreed. The UK cannot strike a deal with the EU until after it has left the bloc, but it will be required by the EU to sign up to the so-called divorce settlement and commit to payments prior to that deal being reached. And that, of course, means paying the bill with no legal guarantee of what the post-Brexit deal will look like. The UK Prime Minister's official spokesman on Monday confirmed that while the UK accepted it could not formally sign the new trade agreement until after Brexit, it wanted commitments to future trade agreed in practice before Britain's departure in March 2019, reports Politico. The trouble for me is that it does not matter how much you trust the other side in a contract or how utterly impeccable and honourable both sides are, it really does matter what is legally enforceable. Because the people who shake hands on an outline deal today may not be the same people who sign the deal and then further on not the same people who enforce or indeed potentially exploit it. And never forget that we are dealing with a political entity that is desperate for money and also has to ensure that the UK is seen to fail outside of its grubby grasp. Then factor in the solidly remain nature of a considerable number of our own establishment that will be entrusted with much of this task. And I think you'll see that Brexiteers should be very wary and watchful in the coming months or we could be signing over the crown jewels and getting a useless and unenforceable I owe you a deal note in return. Moving on, the UK Brexit Secretary David Davis has come out fighting against claims by Labour that the Tory government will strip away all workers' rights and return the UK to the age of the workhouse the day after Brexit is achieved. The UK, he said, will not be plunged into a Mad Max-style world borrowed from dystopian fiction in a race to the bottom. They fear that Brexit could lead to an Anglo-Saxon race to the bottom, he said. With Britain plunged into a Mad Max-style world borrowed from dystopian fiction. These fears about a race to the bottom are based on nothing. Not our history, not our intentions, not our national interest. But while I profoundly disagree with those who spread these fears, it does remind us all that we must provide reassurance. How anyone could think that an elected government could survive such a stripping of workers' rights for more than one term before the other side came in and reversed it all is astounding. But in reality, we know it's all about left-wing political scaremongering in response to claims that a Corbyn momentum-led Labour government will cause a run on the pound and bankrupt the nation. It's up to you which side you believe. And talking about fear-mongering, the EU has now claimed that Brexit will cause cancer amongst UK workers. Brussels has launched its own version of Project Fear by suggesting British workers will be at a higher risk of cancer as a result of Brexit, reports The Telegraph. A European Commission briefing paper claims the UK could dilute health and safety laws in an attempt to lower production costs, which would result in higher exposure to chemicals and carcinogens. Now, this is getting just a little bit silly, don't you think? Now on to the city. A good measure of the intention of financial firms to set up shop in your capital city is the amount of floor space they lease. Since the Brexit vote, the French have been doing their level best to lure finance firms away from London and into Paris. 
but City AM reports that figures compiled by the property giant JLL show that leasing activity in Paris by finance firms fell in 2017 compared to 2016, with 127,000 square metres being taken in 2017 compared to 188,000 in 2016. But be aware that Frankfurt has doubled its bank leasing to 164,000 square metres over the last two years. Still, overall London has kept the top spot, says JLL. Now the new, much-heralded, anti-Brexit party based on Emmanuel Macron's En Marche movement, called Renew, was launched to much fanfare in London yesterday, and only a couple of people could be bothered to turn up. Is that all you've got? said The Sun. The launch of a new anti-Brexit party began with not a bang, but a whimper today, as just a handful of people showed up. And it went on to report that the rows of empty seats had left the party's organisers red-faced. But that doesn't stop them. The Sun says that one of the organisers, Sandra Kaduri, has claimed that Brexit had left the UK looking like a conflict zone. I have to therefore wonder which conflict zones she's actually been to. And another, James Torrance, said that the party wants to be tough on Brexit and tough on the causes of Brexit. We'll pressure MPs to consider the national interest and put Remain back on the table in a vote on the final EU deal, he said. Well, it'll take more than just a handful of people waving placards to do that. And I also want to be tough on the subject of Brexit. Yes, I want to ensure we are tough and force a true Brexit, a hard Brexit, in the true national interest. What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.